everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my channel. Today I'm creating an Easter card and I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going to do a watercolor Easter egg galaxy card. Or a galaxy watercolor Easter egg card. Anyways, let's take a look at the supplies that I'm going to be using. So I'm starting with an A2 size folded card um, and I'm going to do top down. I want a horizontal format. I have a piece of watercolor paper cut to the same size as my card and I'm going to use the entire um, surface. So I'm going to do a flat layer card, um, but you'll see how that ends up in a minute. So I have my watercolor palette as well that I'm going to use. I have another video where I show setting up the palette and what colors I use. I'll link that in the description below if you want to take a look. And I'll also note the colors that I'm using in the description box below if you want to check out any particular colors. And then I have some um, supplies here. I have a pencil to draw out the Easter eggs. I have um, a gold um, a jelly roll pen and then a gold sharpie that I'm going to use. I have a water brush for the watercolor, just a simple water brush. These are really easy to use and um, are pretty cheap and inexpensive. So if you don't have watercolor brushes, this is a really good option. And then I have a purple glitter jelly roll pen that I may use. I haven't made the card yet, so we'll see if I end up using it. Or I might switch this out, but I'm thinking about using this. And I also have a Micron um, fine liner, just in case I always have these handy, but this might not be needed. And then I also have my trusty white eraser that I will also use for my sketching. So let's get started. So for my watercolor card, I want to sketch three Easter eggs. And so I'm going to do a stained glass effect using the gold um, Sharpie pen and watercolor. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to grab a ruler actually and find center. So I'm just going to mark where the center of the card is approximately. Um, just coming in, so this is a five and a half card. I always measure from the starting at the one. That way you get an accurate, accurate measurement and you're not starting at the cut part of the ruler. And so I'm starting at the one. This is a five and a half card, so half would be two and three quarters. And I'm just going to double check that. Two and three quarter there and two and three quarter. Okay, so that's good. Um, because I'm doing the three Easter eggs, they're going to be sort of symmetrical, so it will be noticeable if they're off by a bit. And so now I have some guides to kind of help me here. Um, let's see how this goes. Okay, so I have my Easter eggs sketched out, and they're not perfectly round or perfectly oval, um, but I'm okay with that because I do want this to have sort of a hand-created feel. So I'm going to keep what I have here, and I'm just going to keep my outlines as a guide for when I paint my watercolor. Now one thing you want to keep in mind though when you are watercoloring is that anywhere that there's graphite or pencil markings, and if watercolor gets on top of that, you will not be able to erase it. So you want to make sure that if you have any pencil lines that you want to remove after, that they're outside of the area that you're going to paint, and then you can remove them easily. You could also take some um, kneadable eraser. So I have a kneadable eraser here. It basically looks like Play-Doh or putty, and you just work it up. You keep it in an airtight container, and then it basically will um, mop up any graphite so you can lightly press and lighten your lines which I like to do this especially if I'm doing any art or drawing so I don't have to um, erase across my page and create a mess with the pencil lines it'll just lighten them quite a bit and I like to use this quite a bit for especially watercolor this is helpful I picked this kneadable eraser up at my local art store it was under a dollar and so they're pretty inexpensive if you have access to them, but they're not necessary. You can still erase with a white eraser or any eraser you have on hand. Just be very careful if you're using watercolor paper that you don't um, destroy the paper too much because you want to make sure that it's intact to hold the watercolor. 
So I'm just going to lighten my lines with my kneadable eraser just to lift up some of that graphite and to make sure that if it does get into the watercolor that it won't be very noticeable because it won't be too dark. So you can see how compared to this one on, the, on my left that these two are a lot lighter just by having gone over them with my kneadable eraser. So I'm happy with how this is looking and I think I'm at the stage where I'm ready to start watercoloring. Okay, so now we're onto the fun part. We're ready to begin watercoloring. I'm not going to tape down my paper because I won't be flooding it too much to the point where it might buckle. So I think it's going to be pretty good on its own. I'm just using a medium weight cardstock um, or paper weight. It is the Student Grade series from Strathmore available at Michaels. And it comes in the yellow pad. I'll link it in the description below if you're interested in the exact paper type. But any watercolor paper you have should be fine. This is student grade, so anything above and beyond would be great as well. I have a paper towel just to blot off my brush or remove any extra paint. And so I'm just going to get my water brush. And for the first egg, I want to do a wash of some purples and blues. So I'm going to use um, a, an artist grade one that is actually not something that's in my watercolor palette video but I added this after this is a new addition to my palette and so it's called cobalt turquoise light and it is the artist grade from Windsor and Newton so here's a look at that um, paint it comes in a really small tube but it is absolutely beautiful it is a gorgeous gorgeous watercolor so I'm gonna be using this color in the mix I just wanted to give you a peek because I know I mentioned that I would show my palette video but that one is actually not in there so that's one of the colors. So what I like to do is take my water brush and then I have this one here so I just like to drop a couple drops of water on onto the paint wells and just make sure that they're nice and uh, wet and and kind of prime them for use. So I'm going to do that to my other two colors that I'm using. So I'm doing purple dioxazine so I'm going to drop a couple drops in there and then I'm going to use turquoise as well. This is the student grade turquoise so it has almost the same name as the artist grade but definitely a different color. So I'm going to start with the turquoise and I'm just going to begin painting at the top corner. I'm going to work in thirds as I paint my galaxy. So I just want to put, I'm going to put a generous amount of this down just because it's so pretty. I really really love this color. And it's okay that I have some parts of my paint that are lighter than others, that's okay. I actually want that because it gives more of the galaxy look. So I'm coming in with the other turquoise next. This is the student grade turquoise. And again, your colors don't have to be perfectly applied. They can be in uh, just any shape. I'm just generally trying to keep it in thirds, um, the application of color. And so then I'll come in with the purple dioxazine last. And this color is beautiful as well. This is also a student grade. Most of the paints that I'm using today are student grade with the exception of the cobalt turquoise. And so when you're laying down your colors, you just want to make sure that you blend the edges a little bit, push those colors into each other and get some of that blending going on. That adds a little bit of interest. It's always fun. It's nice to see what these colors look like when they work together. I'm going to drop a little bit more of the student grade turquoise in just to darken up the color a little bit around the edge especially. And then I'm going to come in with that artist grade turquoise as well. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. I tried to retain a lot of the white area over here and keep the darker colors down towards the bottom. That helps give, that, give it that galaxy look where um, it has sort of the lights and darks areas that it's working through. And so I'm happy with how this is looking. I don't want to disturb it too much more, so I'm going to leave that one, and I'm going to move on to my next egg. So I want to do a little bit of a different color scheme here. Getting away from the blues a little bit, I'm going to come to some warmer tones. So in this egg here, I'm going to be using Cad Red Hue. So that is this one here on my palette, so I'll just add some water into that. And then I'm going to use Permanent Rose, which is down here. I'll add some uh, water there. And then I'm going to use Purple Lake, which is right beside it. And this is one of my favorite, favorite colors. You'll see why in a minute. You'll see when it comes out, it looks a lot different than in the pan. So I'm going to start with that Cad Red Hue. 
and again I want to make sure that I have some lighter areas so I'm going to come in with a light wash to begin with and then I'll come back in with some paint and just darken up some of the edge to create a little bit of that gradiated galaxy look my next color I'm going to lay down is that permanent rose so I'm going to do about the same thing, just come in and blend those edges as best I can, making them kind of talk to each other and, and run together a little bit, just to get some of those colors working. They create some pretty colors together. There's a beautiful gradient going on right now between the red and the permanent rose. It's almost seamless. It almost reminds me of a, a Tim Holtz Distress Ink blend. It's really pretty. I'm going to darken up some areas in here. I'm going to pull some of my darkness on this side just because it's really light up here, so I just want to counterbalance, counterbalance that a little bit. And then to finish it off, I'm coming in with one of those pretty, pretty, pretty pink colors, Purple Lake, that I mentioned. This color is so nice. The reason why I've selected this color as well is I want to keep a common theme between the three eggs. So I want to make sure that of all the colors that there's a common base color that keeps them united together even though they're very different in color tones. So by using this purple lake, this is kind of a, a reddish purple and that's going to keep the consistency of the purple throughout. So that's kind of my goal with using this color here. I'm going to come in with some water. This line's getting a little hard on the edges and I want to blend it more, so I'm just coming in with some water to blend that. And I'm going to drop some of that permanent rose into the purple like area too. And it creates a really nice color together when they mix. It's almost like um, a fluorescent or a bright neon sort of color happening in this area. I think that may be my favorite egg so far. So for the last egg, I want to do something a little bit different again, just to keep them different. I'm going to do more of a green toned theme over here. So the colors I'm going to use are sap green. So I'm going to put a couple drops in there. That one dries up pretty quickly, so I'll just put a little bit of extra water. And then again, I'm going to be using the turquoise the, from the first egg. This is a student grade turquoise. And then I'm going to use Purple Lake that we just used. And I'm going to just put a little bit of water to keep that wet, but it is already uh, damp from our previous egg. So it shouldn't need too much. So I'm going to come in with the sap green first. I always like to work lightest to darkest. Um, you could work either way. You could work dark to light. I just find it's easier to uh, build up my colors this way because it's easier to go over things when they're lighter than when they're darker. And so I want to pull in some of this sap green in a bit of a more intense uh, concentration on this right side here. So I'm just going to drop a little bit of extra pigment around here. And then my next color is that turquoise, as mentioned. And I'm going to need a little bit more water on this one. I'm just going to drop it into the well and then bring my damp brush over. I'm finding these colors a little bit more um, tricky to blend because they're so different. They're so um, light and dark between each other. So what I'm going to do is bring back some of that sap green to blend into uh, the turquoise. And that should help create that gradient a little bit more. So you can see that it's blending a bit better there. And you're getting, um, I'm getting actually kind of a unique in-between green, almost like a forest or evergreen color with the blend of those two, which is really nice. So I dropped in a little bit of concentrated pigment here just to add a little bit of interest so it's not just all light or all dark. And it gives that galaxy look as well. And then the last color, Purple Lake, I got my edges drying a little bit here, so I want to try to tackle those first and get those areas wet again. I'm going to put a little bit of water to the side 
and bring in just kind of a damp brush to reactivate those edges. And then once I get this area completely damp and blended a little bit, I'm going to come back in with a little more purple lake just to emphasize that color a little bit more. This is so pretty. I do love this color so much. And I love the color I'm getting between the turquoise and the purple lake. It's nice, um, almost like a jewel tone purple. This is really, really pretty. And I'm just going to drop a little bit more. I don't really care for that white spot. kind of looks like a bald spot on the egg. Not really doing what I'd like it to do. Okay, so there's the three colors. I'm going to let these dry and then I'll work with them. They won't take very long, maybe five minutes at the most. And so as you can see, creating these watercolors was super easy. It wasn't very complicated at all. There was no real technique to doing it. And I had a lot of fun just kind of mixing the colors and and playing with the color schemes. You can really do any um, combination and you can try some swatches and see what happens and what you find out. You'd be surprised by mixing certain colors together. You would think they would make something totally atrocious but it actually turns out really nice. I'm really surprised by the purple lake color and what it looks like with different colored paints. I have this swatch sheet that I created a while ago and I was using some of my main colors just to see what kind of browns I could get or other jewel tones even. I got some really pretty colors, surprising colors based on the colors in my palette. Just by mixing a couple together I just did some samples and this is a great reference when I'm painting as well. So I encourage you to try mixing some colors together and just see what you get. If you've never tried it before with your paints it's uh, it can be really surprising, so it was a nice surprise to, to mix these together and to even have this as a reference. Okay, so while I wait for this to dry, I want to work on my phrase. So I want to write Happy Easter across the bottom, and what I'm thinking is I would like to do that in this glitter purple jelly roll pen. I chose purple because it is the common theme between the three eggs. I have a bit of purple in every color, so I thought it would tie all of these together nicely and ground it well. And it's glittery, and I love glitter, and it kind of matches galaxy thought. So that's the idea. I want to sketch out my phrase first to make sure it all fits and I have enough room. And so I'm going to work on sketching that right now. Okay, so I've sketched out my phrase and I'm not sure if you can see that. It's a little bit light, um, but I think it balances pretty good. It has the general overall um, feel and weight that I'm looking for. I just did a single line in scriptive or cursive and all lowercase, so I think that'll be fun to go with the eggs. So I'm going to leave this and I'm not going to ink it right away because I want to um, work on the eggs first. I'll have my hand over my work and I don't want um, to smudge it or anything. So I'm going to leave it, but I do have um, the pencil lines worked out, and so I'm just going to change this S, but otherwise it should be pretty good. I'm going to make it single instead of double. So I have that ready, and there's not a lot I can do until this dries. My egg's still kind of wet at the side, so I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll come back and work on this. So I have to apologize here. I'm coming in with my voice over mic. I was filming and my camera died. Um, actually, my lens died, and I've never had this happen before. I've had this camera quite a while. Uh, fortunately, it is um, recalled from Nikon, so I've sent it off for service repair, and I had to finish the video on my iPhone, so I apologize if there's any shaking in the video, and unfortunately, I missed filming the first part of decorating the eggs. What I basically did for decorating, though I can't explain it to you, is I started with the center band and I did a common center band across the middle of each egg on every one of them. And then I worked vertically from there and symmetrically. So anything I drew on the top half of my egg, I mimicked on the bottom half just to make them symmetrical. And I just kind of went crazy with lines and little... Um, fringes I guess or um, scallops uh, doily edges I did some polka dots on the first one the second one was kind of unique I did some uh, flares of lines I was just kind of randomly doing things that popped in my head there was no rhyme or reason to the things I was drawing but I had a lot of fun just making the shapes 
and just doodling on the eggs. So I'm using the gold sharpie here and I've outlined everything. What I like about this gold sharpie is it's nice and thick so it creates that solid border line and it really reminds me of stained glass and I just love that look. I think that's so pretty. So now that I have that done, I'm going to come in with my gold jelly roll pen. This is the glitter pen. And so this is just kind of to lighten up the Sharpie lines and kind of make it a little bit more vibrant. So the Sharpie lines are kind of a darker subdued brownish gold. And by adding this gold glitter pen on top, it gives it a little bit of a brightness. And I'll hold it up to the light in a bit so you can see. It makes it brighter but not so bright that you can't look at it. Uh, if that makes any sense. Sometimes um, with gold ink you can have it so bright and reflective that it's hard to see. Uh, this is a nice balance and with having the Sharpie base underneath it just kind of helps boost the glitter of the gel pen. So I thought that this was a nice fun look so I just went over every line that I drew and here you can see the difference between where I've drawn that gold glitter pen and where I haven't. And so it just gives it that little extra emphasis. So now that I have everything outlined in gold, I'm going to add the white speckles and dots with my white jelly roll pen. And this is the part that really makes it look like a galaxy. And this part's so fun and kind of therapeutic to just sit and doodle on your art. So what I like to do is start with drawing um, a circle that's about the size of the dots that I'm drawing now. And then once the pen, the end of the pen has a bit of that jelly roll ink on it, I use what's left on the end of the pen to dab a couple lighter dots or smaller dots around that main dot. And to make sure that you get that galaxy look, you want to make sure that you space out your dots as well. Don't put them all uniform across the artwork. Put them in clusters. So you have a, a large dot and a few little dots around it and then move to another part of your artwork and create another larger dot and then add some smaller dots. And so that kind of gives the illusion of the stars and the galaxy. And it's all beautiful, but our galaxy isn't symmetrical in the sense that all of the item or all of the stars are um, equal apart, um, equal distance. They all kind of variegate, so it's nice to do this, and it gives it a little bit more realism with um, with your drawing as well. Now I found I was having trouble with my jelly roll pen, so I decided to try my Uniball Signal. Um, gel pen as well. And so this one has a bit of a bigger end on it. It creates a little bit larger dots, but it also runs smoother. And it might be that this pen is newer for me too. I've used my white jelly roll pen quite a while and it might be getting old and the paint getting a little thick in it. Uh, but I found that using the Uniball Signo pen just was a little bit smoother and I was able to finish the artwork easily this way. So across the three eggs, I did the same effect on each. I took it section by section or area by area and I created one large dot and then four to six smaller dots around that large dot. Just anywhere I felt that there was an open space and just kind of creating a little bit of separation between each cluster. And so you can see that that Uniball pen is working really well for me and it's going on really easily and I'm able to get a few more smaller dots out of um, one each of the building of the larger dots. So I just about have this finished just adding the last little bit of stars and galaxy on the bottom of my last egg. And this was a pretty easy thing. It's, it has a really beautiful effect, but you can see how easy it is to create, which is fun. Now I'm going to give that purple glitter jelly roll pen a try and I'm going to write Happy Easter. I did some test swatches on a separate piece of paper and I was really happy with the coloring of the purple. I thought it would be dark enough to be bold um, visually to hold the sentiment title, but also whimsical enough to fit in with the overall style of the artwork. So I'm just tracing over my letters. I haven't um, really done anything to the graphite. I left it exactly the same. I didn't lighten it or anything. Um, so you can just draw one to one on top of the graphite lines with your jelly roll pen and it should be fine. You don't have to worry about it peeking through like with the watercolor. Once I had my sentiment finished up, I decided to come in with my kneadable eraser just to clean up any graphite lines that I might not have drawn over that were still left on the artwork. So I just worked that up a little bit to get it warm and just kind of malleable and then dabbed it in places. I wanted to be very careful using it around the jelly roll pen because I was noticing glitter picking up inside of that kneadable eraser. So I made sure to make a very fine point with the eraser, which is one of the beauties of using this product. And I just 
um, tucked it in between the letter forms and tried to pick up any loose graphite that was left behind. Now it's time for the fun part, assembling the card. This is the kind of the rewarding end of it and you get to see what your finished product looks like all put together. So I'm going to use my tape roller and make sure that I have the front part of the card or what I think is the front part. I'm going to rim the outside edge with my tape roller on the card base this time and then I'll do an X down the middle for extra support, especially with the watercolor cardstock because it is a bit thicker. And so the way I like to mount my cards is to lay them on their folded edge and line them up with the edges of my hands. I find that this is the easiest way to get the card straight on my card base and not have it hanging off the edge on one side or overlapping or, or too short. And it's easy to trim on the cut edges. So if it is too long, if it happens to be too long. So I just push that down into place and stick it together and there is my card. This is my finished Easter card. Um, my Galaxy Easter Egg watercolor card. I had so much fun creating this card and it was kind of a, a fun surprise that it came out so vibrant. I just love bright colors and I think this will be a nice fun card to give at Easter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this sort of art craft time. Um, hopefully I taught you some tricks and hopefully you have some fun exploring your watercolor as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel a whole bunch and be sure to subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos. Thank you so much for watching.